Tell me if it's too loud. Okay. Hey. Joey called me up one day and said, you and I should do this. We could be out there doing this. He started sending me these musical bits. And one of the first things I got was a file titled uh, Meth Lab So So Sticker. So I remember I had this riff and it's kind of a wacky, open tuning, finger picky, kind of, you know, insane kind of riff. You know, ba da 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 You know, that. Like, that's kind of cool. It's just country blues, man. That's what it is. And then with a rock kind of attitude. I had no intention on this being the title of the song. I was just naming the riff. Meth Lab Zoso Sticker. I mean, I figured this, you know, it was sort of like, you know, good luck with that. I don't know what got me from Meth Lab Zoso sticker to the next line, but something about it just naturally flowed out. I got a Meth Lab Zoso sticker rolled up in my pocket. And as soon as I came up with that, then I knew what the song was about. centric we're simple we repeat stuff when it's good over and over and over it's about sex it's about drugs it's about booze it's about sex <laughs> drugs and booze <laughs> this song couldn't get arrested the first time we went to radio with it people were like what meth lab so so sticker they were terrified. And then you get the sexual lyric references. I got a seven inch trigger finger, don't know how to stop it. I mean, people were like kind of freaked out about this in the commercial radio world. They were not going to get on board. In June 2013, we got an email out of Blue. And it was from a person representing the interests of Martin Scorsese. If someone would have walked in that room and said, Oh, by the way, this song you're recording here on day two, Martin Scorsese is going to hear it, and he's going to love it, and he's going to use it on his movie. It's just all the possibilities start going. You're like, what, 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 what is this? What, what? Who wouldn't want to be in a Martin Scorsese movie? It's a tremendous honor. He's well known for how he uses music and films. Everybody knows about it. I've never been in this position where I've had to negotiate my own license for a Martin Scorsese movie. And they said, okay. It sounds, you know, that sounds fine. I will let you know. The woman said, you won't hear from me now for a while. It's probably going to be a couple of months. If it happens, I'll be back in touch. If it doesn't happen, you'll never hear from me again. <laughs> so it's like, have a fun summer. In the meantime, we were making our next record. We were in the studio, which was great. We were working, so we didn't have to just stew on it for too long. But of course, you weren't thinking about it. And by October, we were back on the road, and we were in uh, Milwaukee. And all of a sudden, Joey gets a text from his brother. Like, hey, you hit pretty cool. The trailer's pretty cool. Pretty cool trailer. It's, it's like a magic wand being waved. Every time that riff is played, a little more fairiness comes out of my head. I'm proud that we were able to create something out of nothing and then be chosen by Martin Scorsese. And now we're in his movie and it, you can't take that away. That's you know, the scoreboard. That's it. It's in there forever. <laughs> Chicken. 